Now after looking at the two view geometry for a generalized camera, let's proceed on to look at the absolute post estimation problem of a generalized camera. Suppose that we are given three uh, sets of 2D to 3D correspondences, uh, the, which we denote as capital X1, X2 and X3 for the 3D point that are defined in the world reference frame, which we denote as FW, and their corresponding 2D coordinates, which we denote as small x1, x2 and x3. The task of the generalized post estimation problem would be the same as the post estimation problem for a pinhole camera, and that is to find the rigid transformation R and T that brings the multiple camera frame FG into the world frame. Here's an image to denote the problem of the generalized post estimation. And as mentioned earlier on, that we are given three 3D points denoted by capital X1, X2, and X3 uh, in the world coordinate frame denoted by FW over here. And we are also given the corresponding image point which we denote as small x1 and small x2 and small x3 over here. So in this case, the x1, x2, x3, it's defined locally with respect to the camera frame. And we know also the extrinsic value of these cameras uh, with respect to the general camera frame, which is denoted by fg over here. So the task would be to find the relative transformation that relates the world reference frame and the local uh, general camera image frame. So I've seen earlier on that any point expressed in the multi-frame camera along the light ray can be given by this equation over here where qi cross qi uh, prime is the nearest point. Suppose that this is my general camera and this is the light ray that I'm interested in. The unit direction of this light ray would be given by QI with respect to the reference frame of this general camera. And QI prime would be the cross product of any point on this line with the unit direction itself. So QI cross with QI transpose would be the nearest point which turns out to be the perpendicular line from the reference frame to the light ray itself. So this point over here would be QI cross QI transpose. And we know that Q and Q prime over here would be easily computed from the extrinsic value RCI, TCI, as well as the camera image coordinates X and Y. And the camera intrinsic value which is given by a 3x3 three three matrix of k over here. And this point that is closest from the ray to the reference frame would be taken as a reference for all the points on the light ray and this would be offset by a certain scalar amount in the direction of the light ray where lambda over here is what we refer to as the sine distance uh, from the reference point qi cross with qi to that point. Note that the sine distance over here always has to be positive for the point to appear in front of the camera. Since we are given uh, three 2D to 3D point correspondences, this means that the distance between the three points, which we denote as x1, x2, and x3 over here, the three distances between this, which we will denote as d1, 2, d2, 3, and d1, 3, they would have to be consistent regardless of the reference frame of this uh, 3 3D point. So we can write this uh, constraint in this particular form here where xi refers to any one of the point uh, minus away xj, uh, the square norm of this, which is the distance, Euclidean distance between the two points of i and j with respect to the world frame. This is uh, defined with respect to a world frame has to be the same distance uh, between the same set of point i and j but defined with respect to the camera frame the general camera frame so we'll make use of this to uh, formulate the constraint for to, that helps us to solve the unknown scale distance and uh, this can be easily done by substituting the line equation that we have seen earlier on here uh, that expresses any point on this particular light ray into the equation on the right hand side here. So we can see that uh, since we already express 
this 3D point in the local frame with respect to the unknown lambda and the Plucker line coordinates, we can substitute it into this particular constraint to get this equation over here. Since we are given the points that are defined with respect to the world frame, we can easily compute this distance over here. These are actually known values over here. And we also know the Plucker line coordinates. So all the Plucker line coordinates are known as well. And what this means is that in this particular equation, the only unknown would be lambda. And since we have three constraints over here, and for each point, we would have a lambda that is corresponding to that particular point. This means that in total, we will have three uh, sine distances, the three, three lambdas which are unknown over here. Hence, as a result, we will get three equations and three unknowns, which will allow us to solve for the three unknowns in a unambiguous way. So expanding these constraints that we have seen here, we will get this three polynomial equation here, which we call uh, polynomial equation A, B, and C, where K in these polynomial equations uh, are coefficients that are made out of known Plucker line coordinates, QI and QI prime, as well as the known 3D world points, XI, which is uh, used to compute the distance between any two pairs of points. And uh, here, since the only unknown would be lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3, since we have three equations and three unknowns, we can solve for the three unknowns here in a unique way. So uh, make use of the elimination method to solve for the unknowns of lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3 from the three polynomial equations that we have seen earlier on. And we'll do this by first eliminating lambda 1 from the first two equations over here. So in this case, we saw that there are lambda 1 and uh, lambda 2 and lambda 3 in these particular two equations over here. We'll eliminate away lambda 1 that a appears in both of the equations. So this can be done by simply uh, making lambda 1 the subject of both equations and then equating them together to cancel off lambda 1. And as a result, we'll get a polynomial equation that is with respect to lambda 2 and lambda 3 over here, which we denote as f lambda 2 and lambda 3 equals to 0. So we can see that once we get this particular equation, the two unknowns would be lambda 2 and lambda 3. We can see that from the third equation, there are also two unknowns over here, which is lambda 2 and lambda 3 as well. So this means that we can further make use of these polynomial equations in terms of uh, lambda 2 and 3. After we have eliminated lambda 1 from equation A and B to eliminate uh, one of the unknowns in lambda 2 and lambda 3. So here we choose that we uh, to eliminate away lambda 2. As a result, we'll get a univariate polynomial equation in terms of only lambda 3, where the coefficients a, b, c, d, all the way to i over here are coefficients that are made up of k from these uh, three sets of system of polynomial equations, which are known from the known Plucker line coordinates as well as the 3D point coordinate. Hence, uh, now we can easily solve for this uh, unknown lambda. We get one equation and one unknown over here, which we can solve for this uh, unknown lambda 3 by solving this univariate polynomial equation. We have seen how to solve this uh, in our earlier lectures on the single pinhole camera model. Uh, we can do this by do using what we call the companion matrix. I won't go through this again. You should refer back to the previous lecture on how to formulate this uh, companion matrix. And we can see that uh, this would be a 8 by 8 square matrix where we can compute the eigenvalues. And we will get 8 eigenvalues that corresponds to the 8 solutions from this 8 degree polynomial equation that we have uh, obtained. And now, once we get the eight solutions for lambda 3, we can back substitute into this equation uh, over here to get lambda 2. And 
here it turns out that by doing the back substitution we'll end up with a quadratic equation for lambda 2 which we can easily solve in closed form by completing the square over here so here a b and c they are known uh, variables from the coefficients of the three polynomial equations that we obtained uh, earlier and uh, after we get lambda 2 we, where there are two possible solutions that we can get from lambda 2 over here uh, we can do a further back substitution to find uh, lambda 1 so it turns out that lambda 1 also has this uh, same form over here this means that lambda 1 would also have uh, two possible solutions and as a result we will get a total of 32 solutions because 8 from the 8 degree polynomial equation that we uh, solved earlier and then 2 from lambda 2 and another further 2 solutions from lambda 1 so altogether we'll get 32 solution and uh, it turns out that a solution triplet here can be discarded if any one of the lambda is imaginary or a negative value because here we are solving for the roots of the polynomial equation hence as a result there's no constraint on whether this should be a real or imaginary or a positive or negative uh, value it could be any of these values but we know that lambdas here since they are the sign distance it always has to be a positive value hence as a result uh, those imaginary solutions as well as the negative solutions as long as it appears in any one of the lambda in that particular triplet we will discard them and it turns out that in practice many of these solutions in fact fall into the category of imagine or negative value then once we have obtained the uh, possible solutions this means that all the lambda lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 the set of solutions that we have for these three lambdas over here so because this lambda over here as we have seen in this uh, diagram over here lambda simply means this distance over here so this is lambda 1 and here we have lambda 2 and similarly here we have lambda 3 so what this means is that after we have obtained lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 we can easily compute the 3d point with respect to the reference frame of the general camera so once we get this this means that we would have x1 x2 and x3 that are with respect to the world frame and we would also have x1 with respect to the reference the camera reference frame which we denote as x1 g x2 g and x3 g with respect to the general uh, camera frames so once we have these two the rest of the solution would be easy we'll simply do a absolute orientation to get the relative transformation between the two camera and we have seen this absolute orientation algorithm when we talk about the pnp uh, problem now since there are more than one feasible solution where all the triplets lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda are neither negative nor imaginary uh, we will have to choose the correct solution and we will choose the one that gives the highest in liar count so what this means is that suppose that i have uh, several solution r1 t1 this is one solution r2 t2 this is another solution all the way until rn tn this is the nth solution for example out of the remaining solutions from the 32 initial solutions after we discarded the imaginary and the negative value for lambdas uh, we are remaining with n number of solutions so for each solution here we will be able to compute the relative transformation between the general frame and the world frame so what this means is also uh, that after this transformation we can uh, make use of this transformation to transform the 3d points from the world frame into the camera frame and then we project them back onto the camera frame so the projection for each one of these 3d points after being reprojected onto the image will compute the reprojection error and then uh, 
those reprojection error that are lesser than a certain threshold will take the count of it and the solution out of the remaining solution over here uh, and solutions over here the solution that gives the most number of inlier count would be considered as the correct solution so the next thing that we will talk about would be to do a generalized post estimation from line correspondences so the setting would be the same as the generalized post estimation problem for point correspondences except for instead of using 2d to 3d point correspondences we'll replace it with 2d to 3d line correspondences which we denote as lj w where w here refers to that this particular line is actually a 3d line that is uh, express with respect to a world frame FW and then we will also have the image correspondence of this 3D line which we denote as LJC so this means that I have a 2D line uh, which I den with respect to a camera C and I denote this particular line the J line in this particular image as LJ of uh, C so the objective here is that given this uh, set of uh, point correspondences we will want to find the pose of the multi camera system with respect to the row frame so here i have a, a multiple camera setup where i have a reference frame of f g and i have a world frame of f w where the 3d lines are expressed with respect to this world frame uh, and the objective would be to find the relative transformation between the world frame and the camera frame which is given by this 4x4 four four, uh, transformation matrix over here uh, there's a mistake over here so this should be 1 by uh, 3 here is a illustration of the problem of uh, generalized post estimation from line correspondences as i mentioned earlier on is that uh, i have a camera system for example in this case i have three cameras which is rigidly mounted onto a rigid body and the reference frame that I chose would be LG over here the, to represent the reference frame of the general camera uh, where I know the extrinsic value of every one of this camera with respect to the uh, to this particular uh, reference frame then the next thing that I would be given would be the 3D lines that is with expressed with respect to the world frame shown here now the problem is given a set of 3d to 2d line correspondences i want to find the relative transformation that brings the camera frame to the world frame so we'll have to represent the line correspondences using a plucker line coordinate so in this particular case over here notice that we will not be representing the light ray of a point in the image but we'll directly use the plucker line representation to represent the lines in the 3d scene as well as the image coordinates and we'll do that by first defining the two endpoints of a line in the 3d scene suppose that this is my line i would have two endpoints of the line which are denoted by a homogeneous coordinates uh, given by p a w and p b w here so this w here represents that these endpoints are actually expressed with respect to the world frame because we are given these 3d lines with respect to the world frame so here uh, this would be a four by one uh, homogeneous coordinate uh, denoted by p a x p a y and p a z and one over here similarly for the second endpoint it can be represented as a four by one homogeneous coordinate as shown in this equation over here so uh, having these two endpoints we can now proceed on to define the plucker coordinate that represents the line segment of l w over here uh, more specifically the six vector plucker line coordinate uh, of this 3d line segment it can be expressed as a six dimensional vector as we have uh, defined uh, earlier on uh, here we'll denote this the first three as the moment vector uh, of uh, new w transpose and then the next three entries would be the unit direction of this plucker line uh, which is given by this guy over here so we can see that the unit direction uh, suppose that we have this line where the end points are represented as p a w and p b of w so v w would be the unit vector 
VW over here would be the unit vector and this can be simply obtained by the subtraction of these two uh, vectors of these two points over here so I'm going to take PB minus PA divided by the norm of PB minus A because recall that this VW is going to be a unit vector of the Plucker line and then the next thing that we need to compute for the Plucker line would be the moment vector so this is going to be any point on the line cross product with the unit vector and we are going to arbitrarily choose any point which we can conveniently choose to be uh, PA over here so we're going to take PA cross it with the unit directional vector uh, of VW and this would give us UW that forms the six dimensional Plucker line. Now uh, we know that LW over here it's a known entity the, this is because we are given in the generalized post estimation problem we are given the 3D lines with respect to the world frame FW and LW can also be expressed in terms of the camera reference frame so what this means is that we are given these lines which are LW with respect to a world frame FW but now what we want to do is that we want to express this in terms of LC it's the same line over here but we call it LC because we want to express this line with respect to the generalized camera frame and we know that since we know LW with respect to the world frame and the world frame is related to the generalized camera frame via a rotation and translation which is unknown at this moment but we can express LC this particular 3D line over here with respect to the generalized reference frame according to the transformation that is given by the rotation and translation over here so as mentioned earlier on that this rotation and translation uh, it's going to be given by the 4 by 4 matrix over here which we call T G in W so this means that uh, this particular 4 by 4 projective transformation over here it's going to transform any point expressed in the generalized uh, reference frame into the frame of the world which de denoted by FW over here and this means that we are going to use this to express LC which we can see that uh, this can be easily uh, express in terms of this particular transformation of the Plucker line coordinate so here instead of a 4x4 four four matrix of the transformation matrix we have a 6x6 six six matrix here which is by definition the transformation matrix of a Plucker line and we're going to transform this Plucker line uh, which is expressed in the world frame into the camera frame hence we're going to make use of this ro rotation of the world frame into the camera frame and the translation vector of the world frame into the world frame and we can further see that this transformation matrix that we have defined earlier on consists of rotation of the world frame to the camera frame and the translation of the world frame into the camera frame can be further factorized into two transformation matrices over here so the first would be what we are interested in finding this is the unknown transformation from the world frame to the generalized frame which is what we have defined earlier on and as well as the transformation this is the extrinsic value of the camera center uh, with respect to the generalized reference frame so here we denote it as R G in C because this means that the any point that is redefined in the general frame we are going to uh, rotate it and transform it into the camera frame so pictorically the, what this means is that I have a generalized camera where I have a reference frame here which is my re generalized reference frame and I have a camera here which also consists of a coordinate frame which I denote as FC now I also have a world frame which I denote as FW so the relation of world into the camera frame is that I want to bring this world frame into my camera frame and this can be easily done by the product of the two matrices that defines the transformation between the world frame into the generalized camera frame 
and the generalized camera frame into the ca camera frame, which we denote as R W in G and T W in G, as well as R G C and T G in C. And we all know that this is the objective that we want to find. This is the unknown that we want to find in the generalized post estimation problem. So since now we have LC uh, expressed with respect to the camera frame, uh, and we also know that uh, this UC over here can be expressed in this uh, in this particular equation over here. So essentially, this is just the first uh, three by three entries of LC, where we take this guy over here, the first three rows multiplied by LW over here to get UC. Since LC is a six by one vector, this UC here would be the first three by one uh, vector, which is uh, in fact this given by this equation over here. And we also know that uh, as mentioned earlier on in the lecture, that UC and VC here, they are perpendicular to each other, which means that the dot product of this must be equals to zero. We'll see later in the next slide that we will make use of this constraint to define the 2D to 3D line correspondence that will help us in solving the post estimation problem. So here, VC would be the last three entries of LC. And we can see from this equation over here, this would be simply equal to RCW multiplied by the last three entries of LW, which is given by uh, this guy over here. So VC is simply equal to RWC multiplied by uh, the last three entry of LW, which is VW over here. And this is the unit vector of the 3D line with respect to the camera uh, frame FC. Uh, we can see uh, from this illustration over here on the relation between the directional vector and the moment vector of the respective Plucker line defined in the world frame as well as the camera frame. So this is the unknown here that we want to find. The relative transformation between the world frame and the general camera frame. And uh, we are given LW. So this guy here is given. We are given LW that's defined with respect to the world frame. And this will give us VW as well as UW over here. And uh, we are also given the extreme six. So this is our extreme six parameter that relates the camera frame to the local camera frame to the general uh, camera frame. And here we know that we can transform LW into LC. That means that we are transforming LC into the frame of the camera uh, FC over here. And uh, we, can, we know that after comp transforming this LC, this LC would be a function of LW, which is known, and the extreme six value, which is also known, as well as the unknown parameters of the rotation and translation that relates the world frame to the general camera frame. So we also know that the image coordinates at the end points. So this means that for a 3D line that we have seen earlier on, uh, this would be projected onto the local image as the 2D line over here. And we are also given this image coordinates of the, the 2D line. So we'll do the same thing that we'll parameterize this using a Plucker line uh, using the two endpoints of this uh, 2D image line, which we denote as homogeneous coordinates of PA and PB in these two equations over here. So similar to the 3D line, we can also denote this uh, 2D line using a uh, Plucker coordinate. And this uh, simply would be also consisting of a unit directional vector that we can compute from the difference between the two endpoints, so PB minus PA over here, uh, where PA and PB hat would be the camera normalized image coordinates as uh, we have seen uh, in the case where we compute the generalized epipolar geometry and divided by, of course, the norm of this because we want VC here to be the unit norm uh, vector. And uh, UC, which is the first three entries of the Plucker line can also be easily computed by the cross product of any point on the 2D line with the unit directional vector. So conveniently, we can just choose the first endpoint to be that point uh, on the 
the 2D line. So once we have the 2D image lines represented using the Plucker line coordinate, we can then uh, substitute it into the constraints that we got from the 3D lines that we have seen earlier on. So as mentioned earlier on, that the dot product of the unit directional vector and the moment vector of any Plucker line must be zero since they are perpendicular. Hence, we get this relation over here from the cross product of the line in 3D. So UC transpose here refers to the moment vector of the line in the camera coordinate and RWC over here represents the rotation matrix and the unit directional vector of the 3D line. So what this means is that I'm rotating this unit directional vector in the world frame into the camera frame and this is equivalent to uh, VC that we have seen earlier on. So the dot product of these two guys must always be zero because they come from the same Plucker line. One is the moment vector and the other one is the unit directional vector which are perpendicular to each other. And we also further know that UC in the image coordinate is parallel to UC in the 3D world. This is because uh, this is a projection. UC here is a projection of this guy into the camera frame. So we can see that uh, this is the projection of this line of the two endpoints. Since you see here, it's a, we have VC, which is the unit direction of the, the Plucker line in 3D. And since you see here is the dot product of this point with respect to this, this means that this has to be in this direction. And which is the perpendicular direction from the plane over here. So this is the normal of this plane that is formed by the back projection of the line into the image over here. Similarly, we will also have this particular direction vector in the 2D line, which is also a normal vector with respect to this back projection plane. This means that these two lines over here, these two vectors, uh, which we denote as capital UC and small UC over here, they should be parallel to each other. And we'll make use of this relation to substitute the known value of a small UC in the replacement of this big UC over here. So now what we get would be this relation over here, where the only unknown would be the transformation between the world frame to the camera frame. So here, we simply decompose this guy over here into the product of two rotation matrices. One is our extrinsic uh, rotation matrix that relates the local camera frame with respect to the generalized camera frame. And then there would be a unknown rotation which further relates the generalized camera frame with respect to the world frame. So in, uh, we can make use of this constraint over here to solve for the three by three matrix of unknown here. And interestingly, we can rearrange this uh, constraint here, which consists of three by three unknowns into a homogeneous linear equation of AR equals to zero, where R here is nine by one vector and A here would be our one by nine uh, matrix. And uh, this one by nine matrix of A would be made up of the known variables of UC, the moment vector of the Thule line coordinates, R, G, C, this is the extrinsic value of that camera, as well as V, W, which is the uh, unit direction of the 3D line, which is given to us. And R here would be a nine by one vectorized representation of the unknown rotation matrix that relates the generalized frame to the world frame. So we can solve for this unknown vector, nine by one vector, by having eight or more 2D to 3D line correspondences. And we'll stack all these equations together to form AR equals to zero. So in the case where we have more than eight uh, or n number of 2D to 3D line correspondences, A here would have a size of uh, n by nine. And R here would remain as a vector of nine by one size. And this can be easily solved by the SVD method. As usual, we'll take the SVD of A and this would become U sigma and V transpose where we will take 
the vector of the right octagonal matrix that corresponds to the least singular value as the solution in this case here. So once we have solved for the rotation matrix, which is R, G in W, the next thing that we need to solve would be the unknown translation vector of T, G in W. Since we know that small uc and capital UC are parallel, we can further write this relation where small uc is related to big uc uh, with a unknown scale factor of lambda over here. So we can now substitute this known uh, small uc over here together with this lambda in replacement of the capital uc into this equation that we have uh, obtained earlier on and we can see that uh, replacing this with lambda small uc we'll get this particular equation over here where uc is known the lambda here is unknown an unknown value and only unknown value in the right hand side now would be this translation vector over here w with respect to c which we'll see that it can be further decomposed into tw of g and g in C, which is a known extrinsic uh, translation vector. So, but first we'll get rid of this unknown uh, scalar value by taking the cross product of UC on both sides. And it gives rise to this particular equation that is independent of the unknown scalar value of lambda. Uh, fortunately, we can rearrange this whole thing uh, with respect to the unknown values in TCW where we can decompose it into these two values over here. And now we can get this over-determinate linear system of equation with eight or more correspondences. Note that these eight or more correspondences need not be a new set of eight uh, or more correspondences. It can be the same correspondence that we have used earlier on to solve for the rotation matrix. And putting it inside here, we'll get an over-determinate system of B the t equals to zero, where b here it's a n by four equation, where t here is a four by one uh, translation vector, uh, which is further denoted as t x, t y, t z, and one over here. So we can solve for t by simply taking the S V D of uh, b over here. And now, interestingly, t here can be uh, solved with no ambiguity because after taking the SVD, the solution of T would be uh, alpha multiplied by V, where V here is the singular vector that corresponds to the least singular value uh, of the SVD of uh, the matrix B over here, where alpha here can be solved because uh, we will enforce the constraint that the fourth entry of the translation vector to be equals to one. And since we have one equation and one unknown here, we can easily solve for alpha and back substitute it back into this equation to get the exact value of t. Now, uh, so we have seen how to solve for the translation and the rotation uh, matrix, the transformation uh, for the general post estimation problem using line correspondences. There are two special cases that we need to further consider. And uh, in the first case is that we only have one camera in our multi-camera system set out. This means that uh, I have my general camera where I have this uh, reference frame of FG and I only have one particular camera here which is FC. So all the light rays or all the uh, line correspondences in this particular case, they are expressed with respect to this camera only or seen by this particular camera only. So in this case, uh, the whole formulation will still remain because we can easily see that it's only this extrinsic that vanishes. This means that in this equation over here, we need not consider this extrinsic anymore and we will simply write this as W and C where we will simply make use of the uh, or define the general camera reference frame to be aligned with the camera frame. And so all the steps will still remain the same. And in the second special case that we need to consider would be parallel uh, 3D lines. This means that all the lines that we are given, they are parallel to each other in 3D. And here we can see that since the unit directions of all these lines are going to be the same in our Pluka uh, representation, this means that the rank of A will drop below A. And uh, what happens here is that R 
W in G, the rotation matrix cannot be solved because we are going to solve for this using the homogeneous linear equation where R here is a 9 by 1 vector. But if the rank of A drops below 8, this means that uh, we'll get a family of solutions where uh, we'll not be able to uniquely identify this uh, rotation matrix. But this problem can fortunately be easily overcome by omitting the sets of parallel lines. What this means is that given all the 3, 2D to 3D correspondences, we can easily check that the 8 point correspondence or the 8 line correspondences that we obtain to solve this homogeneous linear equation are not parallel with each other. As a summary, we have looked at the Plucker line coordinates uh, representation to derive the general epipolar geometry of the two view generalized camera. Then we look at uh, how to use the linear 17 point algorithm to obtain the relative pose for this two view generalized camera. And next, we consider three cases of degeneracy in the 17 point uh, formulation. And they are particularly the local central projection, axial camera, and as well as the local central and axial camera configuration. We also look at an algorithm on how to uniquely identify the ro relative rotation and translation of the two view geometry under these degenerate cases. And finally, we look at how to compute the absolute pose of a generalized camera using 2D to 3D point or line correspondences.